so hello everyone welcome back and um, if you're new to this channel please subscribe because it costs nothing and uh, we, we it would just do us so many favors um, and help grow the channel which is what we want so yeah don't forget subscribe and uh, and give us a thumbs up if you liked it uh, so this week we are doing some more block work on the barn um, well we didn't show it last week but um, we're gonna show you this week I ran out of time last week we have a lesson in render for Stephen Natalia at Portuguese Quinta Garden Culinaria. And we have a big crane and we're lifting in the containers for Marius and Jeanette on their place after doing the plinths last week. Uh, again we have a few pump problems and repairs, quite an easy repair, um, not too much of an issue this time. Uh, we have a few images and videos of the devastating fires that we've had locally. Luckily I don't think anyone was injured in these, so, um, but I'll just show you a few of the images that we have, which is pretty horrific to be honest. We had Ewan from Frankie Off Grid give us a hand to lift these in. And we have a curious creature called a mud dauber wasp, um, which I'll show you a little bit about her and building her nest. So today I'm going to probably, properly fit this lintel here, and this lintel I've put, um, as you can see, I put some big screws in it, yeah, so that will sit on top of the wall here and here. I'll fill these blocks, as you can see, they're hollow. I'll fill them with concrete and then sink those screws down into it. So here goes. Okay, now I'm gonna put the window in place and what I've done is fixed this piece of steel. I've screwed it through the wall from the back uh, just so cause the wind picks up occasionally. Oh, hang on. Because the wind picks up occasionally so I don't want the window blowing over while I'm doing the block work either side of it. So I'm gonna clamp it to this piece of bar which is fixed to the wall. That should hold it in place.
so I've finished the block work on the front as you can see up to up to height but I need to be able to screw these sheets down into something I can't screw into concrete through a, a steel sheet so what I'm going to do is fix this piece of timber in where the joints are before I, I haven't filled them with concrete yet uh, with mortar I'm going to fill the joints with mortar and then if you have a look at this that's hard cool that's really hard so I've got a nice piece of Douglas fir which is really hard cool, as you can see putting these screws in and then what I'll do when I fill these joints with mortar I'll drop this into the mortar and then it won't come out so that'll be Basically, it's another way of fixing this to the top of the wall. So today I have arrived at a mystery location in Alpadrina and we're here to teach these guys how to put some render on the wall. So here they are, there's Steve and Natalia. She must be here somewhere. She's hiding in the shade. Steve and Natalia, <laughs> Portuguese kindergarten culinaria. So what we're going to do today is put a coat of render on this wall and finish it. Just a one coat render, so we're going to show Steve how to do that so he can finish them all himself. One coat on this because it's only thin here. Yeah, we've only got 10 mil or so, so it's going to be one thin coat and then, uh, and then done to a finish. So he'll know how to do a finish after we do it's like a building site here guys. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in here, maybe a bit dark here. So these walls, the original walls are a bit wobbly. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Hang on, what would be better that way around? The lights are a bit bad. Hold that one? Yeah. Yeah. So we have not the straightest of walls here and Steve's added to the top of this but um, the straight so we need to do a scratch coat here first yeah and then then we'll put then he'll know how to do a finish coat afterwards yeah so we'll do the finish coat first and then the scratch coat second yeah that makes, makes sense. sense yeah Does that makes sense yeah makes sense okay. I do things backwards anyway so it's fine <laughs> so like I said we're gonna render this wall with one one coat finish coat of render the blocks are nice and flat They've also had a, like a prime of paint on, so that should seal them a bit better, so that'll be fine. So tools we need for this bucket, obviously filled with water for the sponge later. A uh, hook, uh, trowel, steel trowel for applying and finishing the render. Um, a scoopy trowel for, for loading up the hook, yeah. And then a little pointy trowel for getting into corners, fine corners and stuff. And maybe a roundy one for the same sort of reason probably don't need this one this is for when we do the scratch coat inside the reason it's called a scratch coat is you put your render on and then you scratch the surface with this like, like I can't show you but so you just run this along and it puts little grooves in ready for the next coat to give the next coat something to key to and then obviously a sprayer to keep everything moist because we have that big thing in the sky up it's here been, somewhere it's been quite angry the last couple of days it's been angry <laughs> it's been very angry Before we start anything, we're going to give it a good spraying, make it nice and moist so nothing dries out too quickly.
Okay, cool. So what we're doing now is using, I don't know which side I should be, <laughs> using a piece of polystyrene instead of a plastic float. Only because we need to get on with this in a hurry. Um, so I'll show you what this does. See, just spray a little bit there. So this is starting to firm up now. And what we do is use, this would be a plastic float normally. A bit more water here, please. Because uh, it's drying up so quick, we can be, this is really gentle, so. And what, what happens is you're taking off the high spots, and if you see here, filling in the low spots just by doing this. This gives you then a perfectly flat finish. So we do the whole wall like that. See a hollow there, so what we can do. As you can see, it fills in the hollows. So there we go, really sort of bad light, um, but all laid up, you can just see where it's starting to dry out, the, where the joint marks are in the block work, but it's all flat, and uh, we now move on to the next stage, which will be sponging it off, when it's dry enough, and the way you tell when it, if it's dry enough, yeah, you shouldn't be able to make too much of an imprint in it, like that, see there's a little bit of a dent there, so it needs just a little bit more. So you can put a fair bit of pressure and it doesn't dent it, yeah? Okay, so we have a bucket of water and a sponge. But this is now flat. And this is, this is where the magic happens, so... You get your sponge, not like wrung ring right out, but just... A little bit of water. Jump, and then just rub it in big circles like that. You see the difference? Yeah? And that's again, it's just knocking off all the high spots now. And you need to keep the clean side of the sponge to the to the wall, yeah? And when it gets dirty, you need to re-wash it off all the time, okay? Yeah, and you can feel it start to drag, you need yeah. to turn it around. Cool. So there we go, at least Steve cleaning everything up. So this wall's finished now. I know the light's not very good on the grey wall looking into the sun, but uh, it's nice and smooth. And Steve is perfectly happy with the technique now, yeah? Very much so. Yeah? Good. Good, good, good. Now, now to finish it, now I just need to know how to start it. <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do now, yeah, so what we'll do now is do the same layer on, on the inside, and then I'll just film a short bit of when, when it's laid on, how we, but we use the derby again to get it get flat in both directions yeah and then I'll just show you how we put the scratch coat on and that's it so now we've got uh, this on it's fairly flat um, this is the, the scratch coat so it just needs to be fairly flat it doesn't need to be perfect and we're going to scratch it off with our comb Ooh, look we have done above it's a bit dry here I must say Spray that oh, okay. Just to give it a key for the next coat to stick to. All the way along, like so. Hence the expression scratch coat. I love the concentration thing. You like the concentration thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the next coat of render that goes on there just feeds this lovely. Or you can leave it like that in a, some fancy pattern. Tell someone it's art. Yes. Yeah, job done. So today I'm here with Marius and Jeanette again and the, the uh, containers have arrived to go on the pads. 
unfortunately we had to knock a pad out um, to get the container to fit, <laughs> to get the lorry in. And we're not sure if the lorry will get out, but here we go. And here comes the second one off. Nice bit of kit. I suppose I should go and help, really. face the other way. Need to turn it, Nick. Okay, so here goes, um, problem of the week. <laughs> uh, this is a pressure switch. This is our irrigation pump. As you can see, full of cobwebs and stuff. But the problem we have is, hang on, let me see if I get some light on the subject. Oh, is that better? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe a bit like that. Yeah. Okay, the problem we have is this is the, the contacts here for the switch and uh, one side is completely missing. I can't find it anywhere so it just stays permanently off now. So this pressure switch uh, has to go. So what we need to do is take off the so the positive or the brown ones are on the left hand side 
This is just like for like switch here. Yeah? Oh, they're tight. And then negative on this side. Yeah, and then we've got two earths back here. Not sure the earths are on the same. No, the earths are on a different type of fixing. As you can see. Oh no, they're not the same. And another earth here. So that now should all feed out of these little rubber grommets. So I'll take one off anyway. Like so. In fact, we could keep the same grommets, why not? Same on this side. Like so. Then we can undo the pump. The pump. Then we can undo the actual thing from the pump. Like so. I'm not sure if this would be under pressure. It may well be, because it's a pressure switch. Ooh, time will tell. Hang on. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it. May need to re-pressurise the system. Okay, I oh, know because this would be pressure which is formed by the pump, not what's in the vessel. Yay! Because the pressure in the vessel just pushes a balloon and squats it down inside of this red chamber. So that's what that'll be. Okay, so new switch. I'll take the grommets out, and we'll just screw that back on there. I might. Oh no, there's a rubber seal on the end, so that's perfect. Just make sure that's not a rubber seal, so there's a gasket there. Hang on. No, so does this have a seal? Oh, it's all different, so... Hopefully... With this gasket that's in here... Just sits against this... The face, face of that. I can feel that pinching against the rubber now. Make sure it's square. And that's nice and tight. There we go. Still see that? Yay. So what I'll do now is obviously reconnect everything. I'll start with the earth because I can see it from here. So we'll unscrew this one, pop the earth behind it, yay. And then we'll put these two back in here and put the grommet in. There. Maybe, maybe we should have thought about that first. Maybe the grommet needs to be over these this outer sheath as well. <coughs> and we'll do the same on the other side. Earth first, where we can see through the hole and the grommet in the hole. Cool. So we had 
live on the left, neutral on the right, but it doesn't really matter either way. It's just a connecting a circuit. So we'll put the two blue ones on the right and the two brown ones on the left. Yeah. Oh, press too hard there. Interesting. So there we go, check the switch contacts. Yeah, no problem, everything works well. So if you see for that old switch, with the old switch, these contacts, if you see here, there's this little spring and a sort of a, a pin on a spring underneath which raises the contacts here. Yeah, on this side it's all gone, it's all missing, I don't know where it is. So there we go. So the new one has a nice cover, just check everything's all tight in here. Yep. And we have two browns on the left, two blues on the right. Put the cover back on. And it should be preset to come on at about one and a half bar and off at about two and a half three. So what I've done with the aid of the compressor etc is pre-charged the balloon now to 2.5 bar. So now I'm going to fit the pump. So there we go, really windy today. Now helping the fact we've got a fire in the next village over in Val de Bezeros. Uh, I don't know if you can make out the planes in the distance. It's been going for a couple of hours now. Uh, going up the mountain so... <coughs> Yeah, not good. But anyway, here is the pump. Fitted. Uh, let me take you down there. So, oh, it's dark in there. Pump all fitted with new switch. Uh, bled through. Well, I just might have switching it on and opening the pipe. So I'll show you the other end. Oh, it's right here. Here's the end of our hose pipe. One of them, which we use, we use this pump, which is spring water for all the animals and all the irrigation. And on, hang on, get over this one. You can now hear the pump running. I'll turn this off. Pump still runs to build pressure, and then turns itself off once it reaches the pressure. What wasn't happening with, with this. So you should be able to have it on like a little bit and the pump won't cut in until the pressure gets down to about one and a half bar. Honest. And there, it's just cut in there. So I turn it off again. Cool. All working as it should be. Okay, so um, yeah, as I mentioned, we've had a few fires in the area this week. Uh, this fire in particular was a couple of kilometers from us and started in Montreal. Um, yeah, it eventually covered 200 hectares, I believe. Um, it was accidentally started by an old guy using a strimmer and the sparks from the strimmer um, set fire to the brush and then it got out of control fairly quickly. There was another fire near Aldea de Bispo, and uh, that was, was twice the size apparently. But both fires, the you know the brave efforts of the firefighters here, and the aeroplanes and uh, everyone else involved, and members of the public as well, uh, they got both fires um, basically put out within two days. You know, within a couple of days. So yeah, done really really great work, and uh, yeah, it's one of the worries of living basically anywhere in the world where you have wildfires, California, Australia, Canada, Hawaii, uh, anywhere. So yeah, a bit scary, but uh, luckily we weren't um, anywhere near it real realistically, so that's all good. Okay, so we have Ewan here from Frankie Off Grid today to help me put the poles for the top of the shed. So I finished the block work either side-ish, 
not quite totally finished but I've got the front piece in as you saw uh, now we need to lift these up so I can then mortar underneath them fix them down uh, and then I need to do two rows on the back and then we can put the roof on yeah. but that will be the next video mm. right let's Okay, a little bit more. So now you need to get get your end up. All right. <coughs> okay, to me. Et voilà. <coughs> there is actually a flat bit at the bottom if you wanted to. Yeah. Just... Oh, hang on. Just turn it a little bit that way. That way? Yeah, like that. That's it. Good there. Yeah? Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Hang on. Hmm. Don't move it. A bit more. No. Yeah, like that, I think. Maybe turn it. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. I do. Well then, guys. <coughs> Easy. So what I'll do now is bed them on mortar so they're at the right height, and then I'll fix them to the beams there. Yeah, I'll actually screw through here into this. I'll hold it in place. This needs to go up. I oh, know that's pretty good. That one needs to go up about that much. Uh, yeah, pleased with that. Okay, everyone, so that's the last two rows on the back done. Uh, you see I've got a string line. You just make it out. String line through the top here. Excuse me. I've got literally three blocks to put in there. I've run out of cement. Uh, sorry, I've run out of mortar, so I can't do that. But these are all now set in the correct place. The level from the top is level over there and the level across that way. So um, yeah, ready for the roof and that'll be in next week's episode. <laughs> Pretty sure these are called mud wasps. You hear the noise it's making. It's making a little nest out of mud. So this mud dauber here, seriously quick at building a nest. So this is the mud dauber back, she's building this seriously quickly. Interesting to find out where she's actually going to. Might, uh... She's telling me to go away. So day three of our friend, the mud dauber, and she's built a proper castle here now. She's going and going and going for it. Oh, she's sealing it up, look. Oh, is she? Yeah, so she's laid an egg oh, inside. Right. She's sealing it up. and there's, so She must have put a spider in there. She'll put a spider in there for it to eat. And then, uh, yeah, all well, the others have been sealed up, look. So, it's looking like she's done. 
She sealed it off, checking it all out. Oh, what's she doing that? Doesn't want to be on camera. Yeah, shy. <laughs> They're just such a weird, weird looking... I mean, I don't know how many she's built there. But that's a lot of muddy bits. A lot of mud daubing going yeah. on. Yeah. And yep, a, she's sealed that one in, so it looks like she's happy with that. And I must say that I've seen a lot worse rendering <laughs> done by humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so like I said, the, the roof will be in next week's episode, so don't forget, if you like this episode, like, like, subscribe, and... Ring that little ding, notification ding, ding. bell to get notification of uh, our next video that comes out. See you in the next one, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, a little bit more something we've got to show you. Forgot all about it. Yeah, on that note, oh, excuse me, steam. On that note, um, we must have some of the best subscribers in the world, is all I can say. We do indeed. So uh, we have a couple of, a couple more. Um, IBC you can see tanks. them there. IBC tank covers. So we only need one more. I must sort that out. Uh, so big thanks to Eric Joyce and Yuki or Yuki. I probably mispronounced it, but yeah, thanks Eric and Joyce. Uh, awesome. And um, also big thanks to an anonymous person who give us sent us this via our Amazon wish list. Easy Brilliant. to do. Go on the wish list. Pick something from our list and 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 send it to us. It's, it's great. <laughs> we absolutely love it. And, and another big thanks to friends. Where is it? Where is it? Hang on, she's hit it. Yeah, as I was saying, we've also got some mitre bond from James and Christina from uh, the Kinta down in the Algarve. Yeah. Thanks Thank guys, you. awesome. Thanks so we will much. return the favor, honest. I'm probably come and see you relatively soon-ish. You know what things are like. <laughs> Be so, warned. bye. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievably, I've um, just had a phone call and just had to nip up to the village to the post office because we've had another delivery of our final um, IBC tank cover from Joyce Collins. So thanks Joyce, that's awesome and you've just made the cut for the video.